In this video, we are going to go over an overview of the activity feed and its unique features so that you can decide if this is a tool that you want to use with your students. The activity feed is really great because it's kind of got a social media type vibe to it. So you can create posts, you can comment on posts, and then your students, if you allow them, can also create and comment on posts as well. So you do get some really good dialogue and back and forth conversation happening in the activity feed. And I would say that that is one of the bonuses of using it over the announcements or news tool. To get started, what you wanna do is make sure that your activity feed is on your course homepage. If it's not, for some reason, you can come down to your three dot menu down at the bottom of your homepage, go to edit this homepage, and then you're just going to, in your widget area here, search and add your widget, and then click Save and Close. If you need a refresher on how to do this, you can go back and watch the homepage layout and system widgets video to see how to do this. With the activity feed on our page, the first thing I wanna do is just take a quick look at the universal settings for the activity feed. If you click on the drop down arrow beside the name in the widget, you can go to manage commenting and posting here. And so you can change the settings overall globally for the commenting as well as the posting. You can enable comments on posts. You can also enable the mini bar notifications for comments, or you can turn them off. Now, whatever you choose here, you can override it for each individual post. So if you wanna leave it on default and then kind of decide as you go, that's probably the best way to go about doing it. And then your posting permissions, you can either allow your students to create posts or not. So that's gonna to be totally up to you and whether you wanna make use of that feature or not. I'm just gonna leave it on the default settings though because just for sake of simplicity and demonstration, I think that's the easiest way to do that. Now to create a post, you're just gonna click in the create a post section. And the first thing you'll notice is that you do have two different possible types of posts, a message or an assignment. Now, my recommendation is not to create assignments here. I think it's best in terms of course organization to keep all of your assignments and content and everything within the content area itself and have everything linked there and then just use your activity feed for messages and linking back to those activities that you've created within your content area. So I'm not gonna go over the assignments in this video. You can take a look at it and see if it's something that interests you, but I do wanna focus on the message part of our activity feed. Really simple. You would just start typing in your message in this bar. So maybe I want my students to watch this video. And so I might type that and you'll see you've got a bit of a rich text editor here. So if I say wanted to bold the word watch, I can do that. I could also add in one of the system emojis here. So maybe, yeah, let's go with the one with the stars in his eyes. And then, you know, to keep it really simple, you can just take your link for your video, paste it in here. And what's really nice is it will read that link and add it to your post itself. And another hack here is once you've done that, you can delete the link and it still keeps it right here. I'm gonna then hit post so we can just see what this looks like. So that was a really, really quick way to create a post that has a video already embedded in there. Now let's go create one more post because you can do some advanced options within here. So maybe I wanna call this learning for today. And then if you come down to the attach here, there's a bunch of options. So let's click on that and there's a variety of things you can do. You can upload a file, you can attach links to existing activities, attach a web link, attach something from your Google Drive or attach a video from the web. So if we go to file upload, this is really just dragging and dropping any file from your computer really. It can be anything. So it could be, for example, a video, or it could be really, really anything, an image, 
an audio file, anything should work here because really it's just uploading that to your course content and adding that to your course shell and then the students are able to access the file that way. I'm just going to add this would you rather template then and put that on there. So you can see how quick that is. It's just added that attachment there. Now, if we continue on here, the next one over is attach a link to an existing activity. This is very similar to your HTML editor. If you click on it, you get access to all of the course materials and all of the different tools within Brightspace. So you could, for example, if you had a quiz, you could come into your quiz, attach it here, or you can even create a new quiz while you're in here. So that's kind of nice to save you a bit of time. You can also come to your Google Drive from in here or external learning tools if you have any of those set up. Or you can scroll down to the bottom and get some of your third party apps. So if you have Google Assignments or you, if you have Google File Embed or Google Meet set up, you can get those in here. I do want to show you this Google File Embed in a second because I do have kind of a workaround thing for Google Docs if you're attaching them. So let's go back to the attach and just take a look. So you can attach a web link. So you just paste your URL in here, give it the title you want it to display on, and then hit insert. Going along, you can attach files from Google Drive. So let's take a look here. And if we click on this, what I'm going to show you is if I attach a file from here. So I've just got this copy of buttons example here, and I'm going to click select. I did set this file to anyone with the link can view before I added it here. And so you can see when I add that, it gives the name of the file, but then doesn't really give you much else. So instead, if you go to attach and you go through attach link to existing activity, scroll down to Google file embed, I'm going to go and find that exact same file. So I just have to give it permission here. I'm going to say select file. It's going to give me another pop-up window to my Google Drive. I'm picking the exact same file here and I'm going to click add and then attach. And now what that's done is it's given me a bit of a preview window of what that file is, the name, as well as a bit of more of a description. So I would say if you're attaching a Google Doc, I would probably be going through the Google File Embed third party extension versus putting it in through the Google Drive itself. The last one, the video, is you can, and what's nice about this is if we take our link from YouTube that we used earlier and we paste it in here, then it actually gives you a preview of what the video looks like and allows you to come in and change the title as well. So you could give it a different title if you didn't want to bring in the information from YouTube itself. I'm just going to leave it as is though and click save. And you can see that when we do that, it inserts our YouTube video and embeds it directly into our activity feed so that our students could immediately come in and click play and watch it right from here. I'm just going to hit post then and you'll see that all of those different links now are added in there. So it's a nice way to be able to add that information in. Now another thing I like is if you click on the three dots beside any of your posts, you can go back and edit them. You can also pin them to the top or you can delete them. So if we take this second post here and pin it to the top, it ends up at the top of our activity feed. This is really great then for that important information or important links that you want students to be able to access right away. So keeping that at the top of your activity feed would be really, really useful. You can also unpin it here by clicking on the pin again, and that will unpin it. The other thing, if you go into your edit message and say you want to get rid of comments, maybe something inappropriate got, got posted or something else happened and you just want to shut that off, you can uncheck it at this point and click save changes. So now you can see that post does not have comments or the ability, whereas this one does. 
And if you want to add a comment, it's the same for you and for your students. You really just click in the box and start writing in there. So here is my comment and then click on post and you'll be able to see all the comments there. You can also go back and edit or delete your comments as well. That then is a really quick overview of the activity feed, how it differs from the news feed and why you might choose to use it and how you can use it as well. Thanks for checking out this video. We'll see you in the next one.